Hey there, Dragon Ball Affinity. I am your DBI admin, Eichenbahn, uh, coming to you live from our Ginyu, from Ginyu Base headquarters here. Uh, and we're going to do another roleplay review. Uh, this one is for Welding the Mind, Ego Breaker, by Len. Um, I'm not going to read this one. I think it probably is short enough for me to read, but um, I've already read through it once altogether. Um, and it's a, it, it is a good log. I really like how Lynn sets this up where, uh, you know, she's kind of in this really cold, dark cell. I, I don't actually know where she is specifically right here. Um, she's definitely not being treated any differently than anyone else on the Cobra. So there's no reason she should be in some dark place, like, unless she's just specifically chosen that. Um, that's where she is. Last we left off with Lynn, I mean, all that we really know is that, uh, you know, she... She needs to wait for Endon's concoction to work on that bracelet, and then maybe she'd be able to smash it off at some point. Um, so she she wasn't left anywhere dark or mysterious, or but th this is where she kind of opens in as uh, the log, and it's kind of this this dark cell room. Um, it's really cold. Like she has these you know things like purple streamers lifted off the grate on the far wall, um, indicating the climate control, and. She's, you know, pondering this this bangle because obviously it's a hindrance to her power. It's like really cutting off her her strength, and I'll kind of talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but there's a this this post right here. I think is really the the seller for the law. Well, this one and another one, but where she there's like an ancient image of like Planet Vegeta, uh, like rotating like a, a world that no Saiyan. Had seen in their life, had seen in their lifetime, but Lynn could not help but feel strong ties to it, Planet Vegeta, um, and so she, as she sort of sees this this image somewhere, she starts to think about the Saiyan warlords that are on the fringes of the universe that have kind of been gathering and starting to attack places. Uh, she, you know, has this internal monologue with herself of her, you know, like her ambitions towards that. And she even does like this kind of image training where she she imagines what Planet Vegeta would look like, and I thought that was really cool. Um, you know, it seems seems kind of obvious in a way that like they're you know for Saiyans like maybe they would be homesick, maybe they would wonder like what was our world like before it became basically a nuclear wasteland. Um, you know, there there might be that might have been old stories that were told about Vegeta that you know uh, you know. Maybe someone's clan came from part that was like really deserted place, and others came from a jungle, and they start, you know, maybe Saiyans every now and then when they get together, you know, especially Saiyans from different parts of the universe, kind of discuss, you know, what their families told them about Vegeta, and they kind of are building the landscape in their mind, like remembering, remembering what Vegeta was, but no one having a clear idea. Um, although all that kind of goes out the window when. This is the you know the modern age with modern technology, so there probably is like videos and stuff of Planet Vegeta, but it's it's not the same, of course, you know. But uh, the the purpose of this log is really just you know she does this image training, and um, she's thinking she actually thinks a lot about how like Endon talks about power and starts to really internalize this ability that she's starting to develop, which she's calling Ego Breaker. Um, like, she really goes through, like, the mental method of how she would make this work. And in this log, we it doesn't even properly happen, right? Like, it's just the image training that is going on. So it's not like she's actually succeeded and done it yet. Um, but she's imagined her, her way all the way to the technique. And basically, the Ego Buster is, like, just really strong key attacks. It's just putting all your key into into your fist, and you hit. And th there's a way that she worded it when she sent the technique in that I just want to express right now. It's worded in such a way that like it's really strong, but it has this drawback that like you could you know you could blow out your you know you could it has like a like by doing this by putting so much energy into it like you crack your own bones or something sort of Kaioken esque. Um, which is cool. It's fine if you want to flavor it that way. Just mechanically, that makes no difference. It's no stronger or weaker than anything else. Um, if, but if that's how you like to play it in your mind, that's fine. Um, and if that's the way you want to like role play some of the consequences of using it, that's good too. 
But mechanically, it's no different than any other technique. There's no, it doesn't have to do that. You can just have superpowered key strikes. Um, but that, and that's basically what they are. They're just really powerful, like haymakers, like full of force. Um, they're they're actually, I'm going to say they're actually pretty similar to Jukin, uh, to uh, Nova's Jukin technique or to Ragnios' Jukin technique, which I think is interesting since they they fought each other and. Uh, I don't think, I, I I don't think that Len ever got hit with one, but the fact that they, you know, they had this big battle between one another and came away with the same idea of like this would be a really good way to end fights is I will just break your fucking bones, um, I'll just put all the force into one punch and I will just crack every rib in your body, um, maybe slightly different methods to how the technique works, especially the advanced Jukin that, you know, like literally goes into or through the body in a way versus just the, the hard force. But I, I do like that little similarity that like, you know, say in, you know, in that it's just a, a, a good technique for an offensive style fighter. Um, and then uh, we get to the end and uh, there's, there's some, some talking with Letta. Uh, I don't, I don't want to like get too much into this. Um, and the reason is I feel like I've expressed everything I feel about the Letta Lynn thing that I can. Um, and so I like, it's obviously a core piece of this character. Lynn wants to role play it. it I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad or anything. It's not my cup of tea, but, um, but the, the real kind of the real meat to this log, the real reason to even review it. Uh, honestly, is there? There's a problem with Len's character. Uh, uh oh, uh oh. Luke's gonna talk about. He's gonna rip my character down. It's like not not in the way that it, it probably sounds when I say that. Uh, in this log and the last one, Len has been talking about she wants to go. She wants to go to the warlords. She wants to go reunite the Saiyan clans. She wants to, and you know, she wants to get involved with that with that story arc and. And that's probably going to be like her next, you know, you know, tiers of, of art that could be done there. And that's totally something that she could do. However, um, this character is missing something very important. And Lynn is almost T3. Uh, she is nearly T3, like the transformation layer. I like to, you know, it's not a one for one comparison, but in, in Dungeons and Dragons, levels one through five are like you're, you're just starting out. Um, but by the time you reach level five, you're basically a folk hero. Like that, that's essentially what you are. By the time you you've in when you get to level five in Dungeons and Dragons, you should have become something akin to a folk hero. Like people in the surrounding region should know about you. You know, your your deeds should be kind of like talked about um, by others. And you know, you, sh you should be fairly well known. Or Maybe a better way to talk about it is that you should have a reputation. Lynn doesn't. Um, and this log, it, while really good and really beautiful, and I know it's hard to get people on channel to actually... Um, it's really hard to get people to fight each other nowadays, which is crazy, because that used to be all we did. Um, not that it's a bad thing, but I know it can be hard to, to schedule a time to get someone and that maybe... Like certain characters just enjoy having more like masterful uh, control over the narrative of their story, um, but Lynn really doesn't have a reputation amongst the cast. Um, and what I mean by that is, uh, she, her character has really just followed other people around the whole time. Uh, she's been a damsel in distress several times. Um, she's even now in this log, she's a damsel in distress. I mean, not, you know, like, I'm I'm going a little bit, I'm exaggerating a little bit for effect here, but, uh, yeah, I mean, she's in a spot. She's, you know, she needs Endon and Zofu and stuff to help her out. Um, but more importantly, just this character hasn't gained any sort of reputation amongst the cast of our roleplay characters. And she's almost T3. She's almost like one of the strongest people in the setting, but she hasn't done anything. Um you know, at, you know, Endon's T3, Endon has funded the Eliza Institute, Endon fought Venom, Endon was on Taldega 5, um, 
he's you know go messing with the black adders like uh he built he was working on building time machines like Endon has a lot of feats under his belt he trained at the Odiokana temple like um he he's got a lot of stuff uh honestly i think i sort of think nova falls into this a little bit too no nova actually doesn't have that many feats of her own uh she did help fight venom you know that that's that's the biggest thing i can remember from nova like the the most standout thing um, she's really well known as being a powerful character in the setting uh, from her battles with Len and other characters, but, uh, you know, like things like Ghost, but Nova doesn't have a lot of feats to really fall back on and say, this is the reason why I'm so powerful. This is what made me so strong. Like this, this is why I'm so recognizable. Uh, but Len, Len is even worse. There's almost nothing. Uh, actually, and I, I'm not trying to be harsh. Uh, I think there is nothing. Because all of Lynn's training has been so internal. Uh, it's all been about this Letta thing. Like, most of her fights... I mean, she did she did go up against Nova, who was, you know, stronger than her by, you know, a clear mile. But she did fight her. And she fought a boar in some bit fights. And then, like, maybe there's been one or two little things here and there. But for the most part, she hasn't done anything. And she's almost T3 and has no reputation. Um, I know that kind of in the backstory of Len, we know that she was trained by Rasher. She was strong in some way. And, you know, when she was led up, uh, but we've not, we've never seen it. We, we have nothing to base that off of except for her one fight and a little bit of training that she's done um, at, completely on her own. So none of the characters in the setting, no one knows how strong Len is. Like, really, the only person who has ever really seen her fight is Zofu um, and Nova. And and that's it. That's really it. Uh, that's, that's her one thing so far, because all of it has been so internal. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, one, it's a problem because you are, you only have a little bit more time to make that reputation. That's what those tiers are for. Tiers 0 through 2 is the time where your character should be making their claim in the world. You're developing, you're telling the, the roleplay staff what you're going to want to do, you know, like what your plan is, what kind of character you are, and how, how your character is motivated. And, and like in this log, you know, in the last one, last couple, Lynn has been setting up this idea that she's going to take back the Makono name, that she's going to go to the warlords and go to like become, go find the Saiyans and try to try to help them or something. Um, and, and I don't want Lotus. I, I don't want you to take this personally. This is not a, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or anything, but this is the biggest case of entitlement I've, I've ever seen. The idea, I mean, it really puts, it really puts the princess part into perspective, uh, because like Lynn has just been running around the galaxy as really kind of accomplished nothing, has nothing to show for all of her journeys around, you know, hasn't helped anyone, hasn't stopped any big bad, like hasn't, I mean, she's just been sitting there fighting in her head with these shadows of Leta, and, and that's pretty much it. Um, that's pretty much it. It's like, what is she going to come to the warlords and say, like, I am the descendant of the Makono clan, you should, you should follow me because of that? Uh, no way, no way. Uh, and so that that's the problem that Lynn has right now. She needs to prove herself. Like she is getting up there in the tears, and like this, like this power down thing with the bangle. Like this is not the time to be doing that. This this is not the time. You need to bust that thing off, and uh, you need to actually get out there and start. Kicking someone's ass. I don't know who it is, or doing something, um, because it, it's it's you know it's a minute to midnight before you you reach the the super saiyans, and you, you've got you're behind. Like you, you don't have anything to your name to take to the warlords. Like there's nothing. And like again, I'm I'm not trying to be cruel. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but like. I'm trying to really warn you, like, it's going to fall flat if you go to them and, and they look at you as anything other than an upstart, whiny little princess 
who thinks that they she gets to rule over them, she gets to lead them just because her name is Makono, the last of her dead line. Oh, and she's traveling with the man who killed her parents, uh, killed all of her family, destroyed her clan, gave up a mystical Dragon Ball that she could have used to restore planet Vegeta if she wanted. Like, nah, man, this that's not going to work. Um, and, I mean, you've got the perfect nemesis to fight. You've got the perfect bad guy to defeat. Um, and like I just said, I mean, if she really cares about, if she really cares about the Saiyans, you know, it makes no sense to me that you, I care, I care so deeply about the plight of the Saiyans, except for, you know, my entire clan that got completely annihilated by the dude that I'm helping right now, or at least traveling with. Uh, I really care about the Saiyans, but, uh, this dude's one dead village means more than maybe me getting my planet back. Uh, no, man, you... You gotta get those Dragon Balls. Uh, I it blows my mind that that it was that, and I kind of felt like it was sort of out of left field that Lin cares so much about the Saiyans because again, like I, I threw a bad guy who killed your entire family and has the has mystical orbs that can solve the problems of your entire people, and and we're just going along with it. Like, even if he is sympathetic as a character, like, that doesn't mean you guys couldn't want the Dragon Balls, right? Like, once you find out, you can make a wish of anything. Like, hell yeah. I If I were Len or Nova or a, a Saiyan, you know, like, f fuck or Okoga's dead family. Like, fuck his friends. I want Planet Vegeta back. Um, that's That'd be what would be going through my mind. Or, like, Greg, you know, wanting Corrin Tower or something. Um Here's kind of a trick with the Dragon Balls, by the way, and this isn't a video about the Dragon Balls, but guys, the trick to the Dragon Balls is you need to invent a reason to want them. It's it's all well and good that we don't like my character's so selfless, he would never he would never want to use the Dragon Balls. Fuck that. You you gotta invent a reason to want them or need them. Can really create a contrived reason if you have to, because that's what the story is. That's what the series is. Or if nothing else, find some reason to hate someone who is going after them. I don't know. Um, anyway, uh, but I, I think this will be a big problem for you, Lynn, if, if you don't step up and start doing some heroic shit. Uh, and what I mean by heroic is not good or evil, just like big stuff, big things that gives your character a reputation. Because right now, I don't think she has one. I, I don't think... Again, besides the fight that Zofu and Nova were in with her, I don't think anyone's ever seen her fight. I mean, really, they might have seen her training a little bit, but, like, no one has any idea what she's capable of. And, frankly, Lin doesn't have any other qualities to fall back on as a character. Um, you know, she's not like Endon. She doesn't... She's not a scientist. She doesn't have... Uh, she's not even like Zofu, who, you know, at least he's a, he's a bastard, but he's a... He's that kind of bastard that's like full of finery and you know has this you know magical intrigue thing going on. All Len is is a fighter, and we've hardly seen her really up against anyone real. Um, you you know she she's got to do something. She's got to she's got to make a reputation for herself, or else she's gonna run into this territory where where everyone's. You know, like she comes up to the warlords. Why? Why would they ever listen? Why? Why would they ever, ever bend the knee to that woman? You know, um, a woman who has no nothing to her name, uh, and that no one knows, and no one knows how strong she is. Like, yeah, maybe you knock out a couple Saiyans or whatever, but you're talking about armies of them. You know, like you you need to have something to fall back on as a reason to lead them, um, if that's the story that you want to write. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, I'm, I'm just trying to help you get to the story that you want to tell, uh, and to tell it better, you need, need to start working on this. You need to, need to give Lynn a reputation. Anyway, uh, this has been a review and I am Ikenbot.